Welcome to the Messiah University Simulation Lab Tour. I'm so glad you could join us today, even though I wish it was in person. We use simulation throughout our curriculum to help students apply what they've learned in class and to practice various skills before they perform them on an actual patient. We have a full-time simulation educator, Dr. Mel Seitz, who develops simulations and coordinates them between courses. Also, we have a full-time lab coordinator, Rachel Lippert, who ensures the labs are ready and assists with the simulations. These are our advanced simulation rooms. We have three of these rooms. I'm going to show you all of them today. In this first simulation room, you'll see that our laboratory coordinator, Rachel Lippert, is assessing a patient. One simulation we do in our curriculum involves having students care for multiple patients at once. In clinical, I may have five or six students with me at one time. If each of them is caring for three patients, I have to keep track of 15 to 18 patients, which is too many, plus the students. However, in simulation, we can assign these three patients in these rooms and the students can care for all of them. They wear a GoPro camera during the simulation. And then afterwards, the students can review the recording and evaluate their organization and their patient care. They can learn from the experience of managing multiple patients at once. Here's our control room. In this area, the faculty monitor the student's progress and control the simulators. For example, if a student gives a medication that might affect the blood pressure, the faculty can program the mannequin so that the blood pressure changes when the student gives that medication. Another simulation we do is the mock codes. And in this room, you will see that our Mel Seitz and Rachel Lippert and Carol Stein are doing the mock codes. In groups, students enter a room where a patient is not breathing or has a concerning heart rhythm, and the students work together to perform CPR and resuscitate the patient. They learn teamwork and also how to apply what they've learned in class. In the clinical setting, if someone stops breathing, students often only watch. Here, they can actually perform the skills and if they make a mistake, no one is hurt. Here's our medication dispenser. Just like in the clinical setting, students withdraw their medications from a locked computerized cabinet and they scan the patient's barcode to administer the medications. We do try to keep everything as close to the clinical setting as possible. This is our last simulation room. And I wanted to show you how similar they are to an actual hospital room in this room. It allows students to practice their skills, especially when they may not have the opportunity to do some of these skills in clinical. So we try to make them as realistic as possible. Students can do almost all the things they do to actually care for patients with these simulators. You saw how Rachel was listening to the heartbeat in the lungs and feeling pulses. Students can also give the mannequins injections. We can add wounds, tubes, and drains to the mannequins to make them more realistic. And on the monitor screen, the students can view the patient's vital signs. Students can talk to the patients and the person running the simulation can have the person respond. We also have our supplies in the C locker towards the back of each room, and we have a table where students can work to organize those supplies and organize their care. This is our maternity and pediatric lab. Here is Lucy. She's a super mom who gives birth about 10 times a semester. We use her quite a bit during the maternity course to help students learn about maternity care. Students can hear the baby's heart rate and determine if she's having contractions using the external fetal monitor. We also can wheel her bed into the classroom and use her to demonstrate various concepts. For example, when the students are learning about labor, we can bring her into the classroom and pause her at certain points of labor and talk about what's happening. 
Then students can deliver the baby who actually cries when born and deliver the placenta. One of our simulations, she gives birth, but everything goes wrong. The baby gets stuck and the students have to figure out what to do. Then when the baby's finally born, he's not breathing and the students resuscitate the baby. Finally, the students check on the mother again and she's bleeding too much and now they have to deal with a postpartum hemorrhage. Through all of it, we can talk about what's happening and why, helping the students to apply what they've learned in class. This is baby Tori. From a distance, this baby looks pretty real when turned on. You can see how she moves her arms and legs and face. She also cries. We use her in many courses. In the maternity course, she's a normal newborn. Students practice listening to her heart and lungs and performing an assessment. In the pediatric course, she's a baby who's ill and the students can practice various infant care skills. For the critical care course, we can attach her to a ventilator and have students monitor her heart rhythms. Our newest simulator is Pediatric Howe. He was purchased through a grant from the Wells Foundation and we just received him last December. His eyes follow you as you move around the room, which makes him our most realistic simulator yet. He can cry tears and students can check his blood glucose level. He also makes some pretty realistic facial movements. This room is our psychiatric simulation room. In here, a student can talk to a patient actor. The students are video recorded and then they can view their videos to determine what they did well or how they could communicate better. This is one of our basic labs that we use when students are learning skills like bed making, positioning, and vital signs. Students can practice on each other or practice on mannequins. We use this room a lot during the sophomore nursing courses as students are learning the basics before they care for actual patients. In addition, we might take a mannequin such as the one in this bed to class. We like to bring our mannequins to class when possible so students can see how what they're learning applies to the clinical setting. This is our other basic lab for learning skills. As you can see, there are mannequins in each of these beds, and this mannequin has an NG tube. Can, students can practice with ostomy care, and this mannequin has an incision. Students can practice wound care and dressing changes. You'll also see that we have individual task trainers for certain skills. For example, we have these injection pads where students can practice giving injections. We have a trach care mannequin that can actually be wearable by a standardized patient. So an actual person can put this chest on and a student can practice caring for the trach. And we have some task trainer chests that students can use to practice administering IV medications and infusions. We have a variety of equipment in this room and throughout our courses as well. We have a cardiac monitor here. We have a blood pressure machine where students can practice taking vital signs. And we have lifts that students can practice positioning a person in bed and getting them in and out of bed. We use these rooms to introduce students to equipment and skills that they'll use in the clinical setting so they know how to use it when they get to clinical. This is our nursing student resource room. It's an area just for nursing students. And here you'll often see students studying or potentially working on a group project. This area and some of our other lab practice areas are open all day and during the evenings and weekends for nursing students to study and practice skills. We have junior and senior nursing students who proctor the labs and are a resource for the other students during those open lab hours. This is our health assessment lab classroom. We have access to all of the typical teaching equipment, but we also have exam tables and curtains that we can pull for privacy. That allows students to learn the material and then immediately practice it during class. 
We also use this area for teaching some nursing skills and for various classroom type activities. Lastly, we have our skills room. This room is a practice room that is open whenever the lab is open. Students can come here to practice specific skills and work with equipment, such as administering IV. So we have IV tubing and IV sites they can practice. They can practice measuring blood pressures. This arm, actually, you can program a blood pressure and then students can listen to see if they hear the actual blood pressure that is it's programmed for. There are injection pads that students can use to practice injections, and they can practice IV changes as well. The equipment in here changes according to what students are learning in class. Our lab coordinator, Rachel, makes sure the students have the supplies and the equipment to practice new skills. This room is on the smaller side though, so for this semester, we're actually moving this room to a larger room so that more students can practice at once. Thank you so much for visiting our Sim Lab virtually today. We're so thrilled that you could come and we hope to see you on campus in person when possible and hope to see you here as a nursing student at Messiah University.